I love going to the diner for breakfast. All right, here you go, sir. Two eggs, sausage, home fries, pancakes, and a side of oatmeal. Somebody's hungry. Enjoy. Wow, I can't wait to dig in. Um, uh uh-oh, we've got a problem. I can't eat this food. I mean, it's not the food that's the problem. Um, I don't have my, my tools. Huh? Tools? At the breakfast table? Can you guess what I'm talking about? No, not a power drill. Or a hammer. Definitely not a hacksaw. But you're getting warmer. Okay, unless this oatmeal is really overcooked, I shouldn't need a jackhammer. Come on, think. What tools do you eat food with pretty much every day? Shout them out. That's right. Forks, knives, spoons, even chopsticks count as tools. That's because the definition of a tool is any handheld device used to carry out a task. Now, you've probably heard another name to describe tools for eating. Do you know what it is? I heard some of you say it. Utensils. That's right. Today, we all recognize a typical table setting as a knife, a fork, and a spoon. There's even two kinds of spoons, a small teaspoon and a larger tablespoon. There's different kinds of forks and knives, too. But how did we end up with forks, knives, and spoons? Who invented them? Which utensil is the oldest, the newest, and the most evil? (laughs) It's time for another whiff of science and history on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun. And who's smarted? Okay, picture a typical table setting. If we're following the rules of proper dining etiquette, there'd be a fork on top of a folded napkin on the left side of the plate and a knife and spoon on the right side, the knife being closer to the plate. Seems simple enough. And not at all evil. Right? (laughs) But it's true. One of these utensils used to cause great fear in people. Can you guess which it is? Did you say knife? Good guess. But believe it or not, it's not the knife. (gasps) Even though a sharp knife could cut someone, ow, for some reason, people were fine with knives. In fact, Knives are believed to be the oldest eating utensil of all. A version of an eating knife has been around since prehistoric times. After using a sharpened object to kill an animal, ancient hunters used this crude knife to cut and eat their food. Knives were used like this for centuries, since people mostly ate with their hands. Finger licking good. The knife was the only necessary eating utensil. Early knives had a very sharp point. Ouch! And it wasn't just for cutting food. Many people used the point to spear their food and take it to their mouth. Nom, 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 nom. Or hold it as they ripped pieces off with their fingers. Some, though, found a different use for the point. Mmm, that meal was delicious. Mmm, I agree. But some bits seem to be stuck in my teeth. I wish there was an easy way to get them out. Like... With a thin piece of string or a little wooden stick. It's too bad nobody's invented anything like that. I'd lend you my coyote claw, but it's still attached to my coyote. Hold on. I've got it. I can use my pointy knife and... Look. I flicked out the bits. Yeah, right onto my face. Ugh. Of course, picking your teeth with a knife wasn't very safe. And to some, the habit was gross. Yuck. Rumor has it, in the 1600s, the chief minister to the French king was so disgusted by teeth picking, he ordered his guests' knives to be dulled to prevent it. (laughs) Then, in 1669, the French king made pointed knives illegal. Whoa. Old knives were ground down, and new knives were made with rounded tips. Other countries soon adopted this new knife design, 
and that's why today's dinner knives are not very sharp. <sighs> this proved to be a problem for the colonists over in America. When new rounded knives arrived from Europe, Americans, used to spearing their food, had to change their eating habits. Can you guess what utensil they started using to hold their meat? Hmm. The spoon. What? You were expecting me to say fork, huh? Well, in the 1600s, forks weren't very common in America, but spoons were. Ah. Spoons are, in fact, nearly as old as knives. And just like knives, they were not considered evil. <laughs> exactly where and when spoons were first created is a mystery. What? No mystery. I can show you where the first spoons came from. Oh, really? Yes. Come with me to the shores of the sea. Do you like? Absolutely. I love the sound of the ocean. Yes, yes. And see those gorgeous things on the beach. You mean those seashells? Yes. Such colorful, delicate, stunning pieces of nature. Watch as I dip one into the water and softly press it to my lips. Aha! Perhaps the first spoon was made from a seashell. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait just a second. Uh, the first spoon didn't come from some sun-baked gastropod. It came from here. Wow, have I been magically transported to a forest? Yes, to the North Country, where the air is fresh and the trees stretch to the sky. <sighs> I'll just take my trusty axe and chop a tree branch off this dead tree trunk. <sighs> then I'll pull the branch apart in such a way that it curves. Yeah, there we go. And now I can dunk this curved end into a freshwater spring, and... Ooh, yeah, that's tasty. Aha! Perhaps the first spoon was made from a tree branch. No! It came from a shell. Nope. Came from a branch. Shell! Branch. Hang on, relax. It looks like you're both right. Really? Yes. Ancient people used local materials to make the first spoons, and the proof is in the name. The English word spoon comes from an ancient word meaning chip of wood. Ah. So people in England and Northern Europe likely made spoons from wood. But the French, Spanish, and Italian words for spoon come from an ancient Latin word meaning spiral shell. which means people who live near the Mediterranean Sea likely used shells as spoons. Ah. Eventually, spoons evolved from something natural to something made by humans. Ooh. The oldest artifacts resembling large spoons came from ancient Egypt, 3,000 years ago. From ancient times to about 700 years ago, most people used wooden spoons for things they couldn't eat with their hands or knives. Over time, spoons changed in shape and size, and cheaper metal spoons replaced wooden ones. The standard spoon used by most people today was designed in the 1700s, which leaves us with the fork. It's the newest and most controversial utensil on the dinner table, and surprise, surprise, was once considered evil. <laughs> So where did the fork come from, and how did it get such a bad reputation? The answer, right after this short break. Now back to who smarted. So, while the knife and spoon have been used as eating utensils since prehistoric times, <laughs> eating with forks is relatively new. <sighs> Though ancient people had used forks for cooking, it was rare to see one at the dinner table. But then, something happened at a wedding feast in a region now called Italy. The niece of the Byzantine emperor had married the Lord of Venice. The guests were enjoying their meals, and since this was the year 1004, they were eating it with their fingers. Yum, 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 yum. That's when the bride pulled out a new golden utensil the noble people in her country had been using to eat with. It was a fork. <gasps> Mamma mia, what is that thing? She's using it to hold her meat as she cuts it. 
Why not just use her hand? Look, now she's using it to put meat in her mouth. <gasps> Why use such a dreadful instrument when she has perfectly good fingers? I agree. Fingers are the best. Vito, get your finger out of your nose. The bride was ridiculed by local leaders who believed her fork was an unnatural, extravagant luxury at a time when such luxuries were considered works of the devil. <gasps> and what's more evil than the devil? <laughs> In fact, forks became associated with the devil, which is why your devil Halloween costume comes with a plastic pitchfork, and why most drawings of the devil show him holding a long fork with three points at the end. Whoa. When the bride died tragically a few years later, people actually blamed the fork. <gasps> they became nervous about using the utensil, and some places banned forks altogether because of its sinister reputation. He's got a fork! Run! Over time, forks became more accepted and less feared. People realized eating with a fork won't harm you, and was more sanitary than using your fingers. Vito, stop picking your nose. About 500 years after the infamous Golden Fork Wedding, the powerful French queen Catherine de Medici made the fork vastly more popular when she used it at massive public festivals throughout her country. Forks soon became trendy, and by the 1700s, they became very common on European dinner tables. It took a little longer for Americans to catch on, as forks didn't appear in the United States until about 200 years ago. Once that happened, Americans no longer had to hold down their meat with a spoon. Meanwhile, on the other side of the earth, a lack of forks and a rejection of knives led to the rise of a different kind of utensil first developed in China 5,000 years ago. Can you guess what it is? Is it A, the spatula, B, the slap chop, or C, the chopstick. Why, it's the chopstick, or chopsticks. Like forks, chopsticks were originally used as cooking utensils, but a population explosion throughout Asia made them popular for eating. You see, in order to conserve resources, Chinese chefs began making smaller meals cut up into bite-sized pieces. This made knives unnecessary, which was perfectly fine with the Chinese, since many felt knives were too violent. According to the ancient philosopher Confucius, an honorable person allows no knives on his table. Whoa. The teachings of Confucius are credited with making peaceful chopsticks hugely popular in Asia. And by the year 500, they spread from China to Japan to Vietnam and Korea. Today, chopsticks are used every day by nearly a third of the world's population. Uh, excuse me, waiter, can I get a knife and spoon, please? Whoops, sorry about that. You need a fork, too? No, I brought my own. <laughs> Big shout out to Emma in Brooks County, Georgia. We love that you love Who Smarted. This episode, Utensils, was written by Dave Beaudry and voiced by Adam Tex Davis, Brandon Bayless, Jason Williams, Charlotte Cohn, Taya Garland, and Jerry Colbert. Additional voices, technical direction, and sound design by Josh Evil Fork Han. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Spoony Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez. Lyrics are written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production. Who Smarted?